David, it's great to have you here today. I mean, the markets are almost in concert, stocks, bonds, uh, currencies, commodities, repricing for the idea that central banks need to chase inflation and they kind of don't care what the economic damage is in the short term in order for them to do that. How does an investor navigate that kind of setup? So the, the first thing that I'll say is that I think this actually brings us to a much better place than we had been over the course of the summer. I, I recognize the sell-off today. I recognize the sell-off over the past couple of days. Uh, but it feels to me like expectations are finally becoming a bit more aligned uh, with the way that reality may play out. And so there, there's definitely going to be more pain ahead. And, you know, now that we have more clarity on the Fed and, you know, we'll get some more clarity on inflation, everybody's talking about what that may or may not mean for corporate profits next year. But, you know, looking at the Fed's forecasts that came out on Wednesday afternoon, what was so interesting to me is that they see a very tepid pace of growth with an unemployment rate uh, that rises in 2023. That is going to be a challenging backdrop, uh, particularly for risk assets. And so from an investment standpoint, we're really focused on following cash flows. And we actually think high quality fixed income uh, is looking more and more attractive, given where yields have backed up to, particularly over the past couple of days. I guess the question is, if you are an investor and considering equities as well, uh, do you have to essentially assume that you're going to have to ride out a recession of some depth, uh, an earnings decline uh, that is not yet priced into stocks? Or do you think the market has come around to uh, more or less being aligned with that likely outlook? So I do think that there's some additional downside in inequities from here. Uh, but one of the interesting things that we've been talking to clients about quite a bit over the past few weeks is that if you go back to the post-World War II period and you look at the average decline in corporate profits during economic recessions, uh, it's about 30 percent. That said, if you isolate the period from the late 1960s through the early 1980s, which I would argue has inflation dynamics more similar to where we are today, uh, the average decline in corporate profits was only 15 percent. And so, you know, clearly earnings estimates for 2023 need to continue to adjust lower. Uh, but we don't see as significant downside as some of the more bearish commentators do in the current environment. We, we've seen the S&P, you know, kind of retest its, its lows here, move below the lows of June. We think that, again, there is some more downside from here. Uh, but if the S&P were to move below 3,500, we, we would be buying to us. That's a level where stocks really begin to, to look attractive. Yeah, not too, not too far down from here if, uh, if indeed we do get there. Now, in terms of the, the global picture, which I know is your purview here, the U.S. dollar going almost vertical here to 20-year highs in the, on the dollar index. We saw what's going on with the, the British pound today collapsing on some of the fiscal and monetary moves there. Everyone assuming that the rest of the world, in some sense, for one reason or another, is going to be a bit of a mess. Um, what does that mean for, for assets everywhere? And, I mean, those stock markets have become even more depressed than, than ours have. So the, the stronger dollar has clearly tightened financial conditions and, and is having an impact on economies around the world, particularly uh, those in the emerging markets. When, when we think about the global picture, though, I do think it's important to differentiate between developed markets outside of the United States and, and what's happening in the emerging world. Um, you know, when we look at places like Europe, it, it does seem to us that these elevated energy prices are, are going to just be too much for that economy to overcome. The PMI this morning was consistent with growth that is effectively flat, and, and we do view recession risk uh, as being materially higher in the Eurozone than is the case in the United States. Meanwhile, you have China coming out of a period characterized by COVID lockdowns. We, we are seeing activity uh, in that part of the world begin to bounce, but what happens in, in places like China is really going to be a function of what happens in the developed world more broadly, because obviously we are a key source of demand uh, for the goods that they export. And so, you know, to, to kind of bring it full circle, I think the reality here is that the global story is really going to depend on what happens in our own backyard. I think the old adage of when the U.S. catches a cold, uh, the rest of the world gets sick is what we really need to keep in mind here going forward. But if, if for some reason the U.S. avoids a, a downturn in the economy next year, we actually think that there's some upside, particularly in the emerging world, uh, which has come under significant pressure due to slower growth and the stronger dollar uh, over the course of the year thus far.